Hey what's up guys, it's Adrian Clark from Zulu8 and today I'm going to show you my render settings in Octane and how to optimize these so then you can take your renders into After Effects and grade them. So if you have your scene open in uh, Cinema 4D and then you go to your Octane render settings, I just want to show you guys what I usually use for still purposes. Um, so if you look here, obviously I use path tracing just because path tracing is the best kind of way to go for subsurface scattering because it, it's obviously a lot more realistic and um, goes off photons. Um, so my max samples I usually go for something above at least 1k. Um, obviously once it gets past a certain point you won't really see a difference but the more the better for stills and um, Obviously, for animation purposes, I would lower this just to get the renders down, uh, the render times down as well. Um, optimizing this, I think 16 for the diffuse and specular is obviously a bit overkill. I'll give you an example now if I open up my uh, live viewer here, send my scene. Um, so I've got this scene set up with that dog. In the previous tutorial, I showed you guys how to set up this subsurface scattering. Um, once this resolves, if we get the info as well, let's put that up. Um, so we can see now that that's, that was only up to 100 uh, or so samples and it was resolving really well. But this uh, setting here, right, the diffuse depth, once you go past a certain point, you'll see no difference. See how this is really dark now? If we keep pumping this up to optimize our scene, we can see that it starts changing, it starts resolving. Um, you start getting more depth and you diffuse, there's more tones, there's more um, color space there. So what we can do is go up to like something like 6. And if we keep going, maybe 7. You can slowly see that it makes a difference, but then it starts to not really make much of a difference. So that's how you optimize your scene. You just go up through these numbers and uh, try to see which one is the best, whereas... <laughs> You don't want to go too overboard because otherwise that's obviously ramping up the render time. So um, let's move on to specular depth. So if I started with zero now, you would obviously see that the backscatter of this object is sub uh, is a specular material. So that and um, yeah, at zero obviously it looks okay. But if you wanted to go up like five or say six, you start getting more depth. You can start seeing that the light will go through more. There'll be less dark spots and black spots like for example that is just fully black which you don't want so let's put that up to 8 put this one up to 8 uh, generally as well I've had a lot of issues with the GI client before if this is on say like a really high value by default I think it's a thousand and you start getting these really really big hot spots right so these are overblown pixels. I'm not really sure why these occur, but I did know that one solution is to put this down to either 1 or something between 10. So 1 and 10. And then obviously to even 9 is too much and you start getting these little hot spots. So to get rid of those, jump down to 1. Obviously we don't need alpha channel checked. That's if you didn't want a background in your scene or HDRI, you get rid of that. Um, and the rest of it I usually just use uh, leave default. So yeah, that's my render settings. That's how you optimize it. Just a quick rundown on that. Um, so yeah, once you've got this render, and obviously I have a link in the uh, description below on how to actually create this look and feel if you want to jump back and do that tutorial and then come back over here, you'll be able to learn how to do this subsurface scattering. Another thing I want to show you guys in Octane is uh, my camera settings. This is really important in getting clean neutral renders out of Octane. A lot of the times Octane generally puts like a green tone through your renders and this can be somewhat frustrating if you don't if you're just starting out and you don't really realize and you want to try and grade your footage all the time you have to get that green kind of spill out of your renders but a good little tip that I've started using and um, it's really helped me speed up my workflow is to come into your camera imager make sure this is checked in your octane camera settings and then what you do is let's just start fresh so I'll, t I'll get rid of that I'll create a new camera for example um, so this is all default settings right so it's turned off you don't have anything on so what you do is you enable your camera imager 
go down to this tab where it says highlight, oh sorry, response. And these are all your camera responses based on real life cameras, I'm pretty sure. And and the the way they would react. So you can get those um uh real life examples going. But what I like to do is just chuck this still linear. So that means it would be a linear color space. And then obviously you have to gamma correct that to 2.2, which is your generic linear color space uh, gamma correction. And then I'll turn vignetting off because it's something you want to put in post. You don't want that baked into your renders. Um, so yeah, that's basically just my um, my camera settings and what I usually do to, to get some clean renders to then chuck into After Effects and grade later. So let's get into that. All right, so let's chuck that render into a new composition. Come over to the effects and presets panel, type in Lumetri, Lumetri color, and then what you do is you just chuck that onto your render. And that will put it into the effects tab. And then what you do is we wanna, we wanna get those, uh, the contrast curve going so then we can get some darker tones, uh, crush the blacks and expose the highlights a little bit more so we can get those tones to really pop. So what I do is usually just pull the bottom half down of this uh, color, so we just get the the darks, dark shadows down a bit, and then you can get the contrast curve going and pop those highlights out. You don't want to overexpose stuff, so obviously if you go too far, you lose all these um, the pixels here; they'll just blow out. So I'll pull that back just a little bit, to create a bit of drama. You can obviously go a little bit further and start like pulling in the center points just so it's a, so you have your more control over each level of this um, kind of curve. So these straights will just keep the the mids uh, level and even and not too bright, not too dark. But yeah, so that's just your basic contrast curve because this obviously in the graph, that's highlights, that's brightening and darkening. So we're darkening the blacks, uh, brightening the highlights. And what we can do is go over into our other color channels and kind of put some more tones and colors into our renders. So obviously with the darks, you would want to pump up the blue into the dark shadows. To, to go back to this example, there's a lot of dark blues in these shadows. So you do that through here. You put your blues into your shadows, bring that back because you only want it to be really in the shadows. So that's that down this end is your shadows, that's your highlights. So again, you can see how the blues are kind of going more into this, um, the shadowy parts. So we bring that up because so you don't want you don't want to be pulling blue out of the highlights. You want to be pushing them into the darkness. You can also bring up this one, the very bottom, which would obviously the pure blacks won't be pure blacks. They'll be blue now, but I generally just like a bit of black and then a bit of blue on that too. So this is looking a little bit green now at the moment so I'm just going to pull a lot of green out just through the middle center part and obviously if there's a lot of red so what we did then was just add blue and take out green so what that's going to do is mix more blue with the red so obviously you're getting a more purple bluey tone we don't want that so we want to pull some of the red out I'm going to try and get get it balanced where it's not being too green either We want to try and get a bit of warmth into the highlights as well. Let's have it a little bit yellow, so we want to pull the green out of that as well. It's very fiddly, but I mean, it's all to personal taste, personal preference, but this is just how I do it. So obviously you can see before and after the grade, right? So it's looking a little bit blue. So in the highlights, I want to kind of take some more blue out of those highlights. So we get those nice yellow tones coming into those renders. See how we're getting closer to that? So as you can see, we're trying to get more yellows into the highlights here by doing that. Pulling blue out of that, it's going to spill that yellow back into it. You want to pull the green out a little bit more. Um, 
but yeah, once you're obviously happy with what you see and you're trying to match your reference as best as possible, obviously my range is not as dark and contrasted as this, but we're getting fairly close. Yeah, so I'm happy with that for now. I mean, you can fiddle with it, with it for as long as you really want. There we go, we're getting some more warmth into that. So we can see before and after of how how green your footage comes out of um, Octane. It's always got this weird little green spill. It's dull. It's not as um, punchy as you want it to be. So color grading is really important with Cinema 14 and Octane. And yeah, you can see the before and after and how how nice it really turns out. You can really start getting some drama into your scenes and just push your renders a little bit further through that. So yeah, that's just a basic tutorial on how to color grade your Octane renders and a quick rundown on, uh, just to recap, a quick rundown of my render settings and what I do to, to get some clean renders out of Cinema to then grade in After Effects. If you want to see more tutorials like this, head over to our website at zulawait.com.au. Check us out on Instagram, give us a follow, give us a like, drop a comment as well, and we'll always try to reply. And um, yeah, we'd really like your feedback. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll catch you guys next time.